My word, potent, is the first word that comes to mind. Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to what has been a very, very, very long overdue video and that is of course my first, in inverted commas, my first drive of my Mark II Land Cooper since I've had it remapped. Now, for my less regular viewers, back in what feels like a very long time ago, I took this car to AMD Tuning to get a stage one remap. And the results were pretty impressive to say the least. Now, stock power, this car, Leo, as he is otherwise known, was pushing out around 264 horsepower along with, oh, how much torque was it? I've completely forgotten. I think it was about 350 newton meters of torque. Bearing in mind that from factory, this engine should be producing 240 horsepower along with 300 newton meters of torque. Now, I may have got the, the other torque figure wrong, so I may need to correct myself in a subtitle. So I've had such a blast driving Leo today, my brain is completely frazzled, but in a good way. So yes, even from stock, this car was punching above its weight. Now there are some people I've seen on forums say that the rolling road at um, AMD Tuning, the dyno, is generous in regard to the, uh, the figures it puts out. But hey, if I've got a printout that says this car was doing 264 horsepower from stock, uh, I'm gonna clutch onto that for dear life in all honesty. That was then though, what about now? Well, <laughs> I still can't quite believe it. Now, Leo is pushing out 326 horsepower along with 456 newton meters of torque. Just take a few moments to digest those figures. Just, oh, I have to recalibrate my brain. Now, there may be some of you watching that may think, but that's not that impressive. I've got a car at home that'll do 500 horsepower. And okay, fair enough, but put it this way. On paper, my Mark II Leon Cupra has more power compared to a Golf R. Okay, maybe not the brand new Golf R, but the Mark 7.5, and also more power compared to an FK8 Honda Civic Type R. And those are serious, serious cars. Now, I'm under no illusions. If you, if you were to put this car in a drag race against the Civic Type R and the outgoing Golf R, I do anticipate Leo would lose because this car has not got a limited slip diff, nor does it have a four-wheel drive system like the Golf R. Therefore, although I do have that extra amount of horses, they can't always gallop as easily as they would like to especially on a day like today where the roads are a little bit cold, they are damp in places. And as I will demonstrate when I'm on a wet a bit, I will get a fair amount of wheel spin. Now, I've not even spoken about the exhaust yet, but I will get onto that in a bit. So this road is a little bit more damper. So right foot hard down. There's the wheel spin. <laughs> front wheels are fighting each other. Now I may consider a limited slip diff in the future, but it's not exactly a cheap item, so I am still weighing that one up. And to be honest, for most driving, do I really need a limited slip diff? No, but I must admit on the days like today where the roads are a little damper, a bit more greasier, then it would be welcome. Of course, it would be rude not to speak about their performance. Now, when the car was stock, the power delivery was pretty good. It was quite linear and I didn't have any problems with it. If anything, the stock power was ample for public roads. With the AMD Stage 1 though, the power, the delivery, it feels a bit smoother, a bit more linear. It, it doesn't feel quite as boosty as the stock power. Now, that's not to say that the stock power 
had a massive amount of turbo lag and you're just waiting for the power to come in and all, all of a sudden it hit you like a boxer's uppercut. Oh, sorry, the lighting's got a bit iffy. I'm in a darker area. So you'd have to bear with me. But my point is, is that the new, well, the remap, yeah, the power definitely feels smoother, more linear. And it's actually quite nice. It it doesn't feel like a remap as such. It feels more like OEM Plus. And that's really what I was going for. Hopefully you can see me a bit better now. There we go. It's this blooming dark roof lining. It's, it's a nightmare when filming. <laughs> oh, this car, it feels like an animal. And it makes me want to do naughty things. Sometimes I'll be going down a road like this, I'll glance down and think, oh dear, I best uh, <laughs> let off a little bit. Leo, he's a naughty boy, he's a sinner. Once a saint, now a sinner. I should, I should have called him Lucifer, not Leo. This car is the devil. Let's talk about that fantastic Cobra non-resonated exhaust. fantastic you may hear that throughout the when I get towards the top of the rev range it does sound a bit like a jet engine which I must admit I'm not a massive fan of but it's not the worst thing in the world in regards to drone I'm cruising at 2,000 revs in six at uh, 50 miles per hour I can't really hear it too much when I drove this on the um, on the A27 on the way here I was cruising at 70 miles per hour at around, I think it was about 2,500, 3,000 RPM, and there wasn't really much drone, and the little amount of drone that was there, that can easily be drowned out by the radio or the road and wind noise. Obviously, this is not the most refined car in the world. Oh, a bit of brake from the squeak, a uh, little bit, a bit of squeak from the brakes there. The traction control is working over time. <laughs> oh, my word. And to think this remat was £200. That is bang for your buck. Now, it is worth noting that you do get the remap half price when you buy an exhaust at the same time from AMD Training, which is of course what I did. But that exhaust, it sounds fantastic. And it's got quite a nice deep tone to it, it's quite rich, but it doesn't sound too boomy, it doesn't sound too antisocial. The, the, cold, the cold start is loud, but not loud to the point where you have to uh, expect notes on your windscreen from your neighbors. I love that you get little burbles every now and then at slow moving speeds. Oh. Oh. Now from the factory, this car would have hit 62 miles per hour in 6.4 seconds. Now I'd love to know what it will do it in now. Of course, I will have issues with grip, particularly on a day like today. I don't have a limited slip diff, I don't have four-wheel drive, I don't have an automatic gearbox, I have a six-speed manual. And I don't have a draggy either, so. As at one point, I do want to film a zero to 60, but I'm a bit apprehensive because this car is still on the stock clutch. And at first, when I was driving the car in a more spirited manner, I did think I was getting clutch slip. 
because basically what was happening there, it felt like the car was, it, it, how can I best describe it? The car would accelerate and then it would kind of stumble on itself, if that makes sense. And I thought, oh, that's typical clutch slip. But the more I thought about it, I thought, no. Because when, you're, when your clutch slips, the revs will continue to go up, but of course, you don't have that power there because while well, the clutch is slipping, it's not able to, uh, to translate the power from the engine to the wheels, so to speak. But in my case, that isn't what has been happening. What happens is the rev limiter will go up, then it will kind of stop, and it will kind of stutter a little bit. And the more I think about it, the more I believe it's probably where the traction control is kicking in. Obviously, there's a lot of power being fed to those front wheels now. And as I mentioned earlier, the uh, traction controller has been working overtime. So I think what's causing that, and I may be wrong, so if I am, please feel free to correct me as long as it's in a constructive way. I think it's where the, the traction controller is stepping in, but not to the point where it's, it's triggering the light to come on. So I've done a few tests for clutch slip and they've passed to the example actually i'll be able to do one in a few moments granted i haven't got a point of view that i can show you the dials which i can only apologize so a good way to test um clutch slip is 30 miles per hour which i'm doing now pop it into fifth and foot hard down and what you're looking for is for the rev limiter and the speedo to move at the same speed obviously if the rev limiter is just going sky high and you're not getting any power then yes that's a sign your clutch is slipping again apologies for the um for the lighting it's one of those days when one minute it's quite dark the next minute it's lovely and bright like this so yes i'm overexposed that's not a good look yeah quite an unpredictable day weather wise still it's dry so I'm not going to complain. Well, the roads aren't dry, of course. Now onto more boring matters, such as fuel economy. Have I noticed much in the? Have I mo have I noticed a, a difference in regards to fuel economy? Honestly, no. Now, a remap is meant to give you better fuel economy, because the theory is because your car's got more torque, you won't have to rev it as hard, and you can use more of the lower end of the rev range, so to speak. So you're using the car's torque as opposed to the, um, to the car's power, if that makes sense. And whilst that theory may hold quite a lot of water, the problem is, is that when you do have a car rebapped and you do have more power, you want to exploit said power. Therefore, your MPG is going to tumble. Now, I've, I've had quite a spirited drive today and I'm currently doing 22 MPG. 22. Yeah, that's far from a frugal, is it? But the smiles for miles is very high, so swings and roundabouts. question is, am I now yearning for even more power? Do I want to go to the next level, stage two or stage two and beyond? And the answer is no. Sorry to disappoint you guys, because if you're expecting some kind of hybrid turbo monster, then you won't find it here. Uh, for a fair good reasons. The first of which, this is really my daily, and this will be uh, the family car once Amber our firstborn daughter is here. And granted, I know this is not exactly the standard blueprint you think of for a family car, a stage one remapped Leon Cupra. I get that. Oh, VX220. Don't see those very often. Sorry, I had to point out that Vauxhall VX220. Yes, this isn't <laughs> the most sensible family car, but at the same time, I think it's still usable for its purposes. 
Now, if I modify this car more, it's going to be, to some degree, less usable as a daily. And to be honest, for a stage two, the gains aren't that impressive, and you need more hardware for that. For whereas for a stage one, you don't really need to do much. By the way, I'd like to say thank you to 4dplates.co.uk for sorting me out a pair of 3D plates for Leo. As you can see, he is now wearing his private plate. And credit where credit's due, the Leo 7 Cut was actually Patsy's idea, my wife. And I really like it because it says Leo, because it's Leo's name. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like Leon, because it's got the 7, which kind of looks like an N if you squint. And of course, you've got a cup, which is for Cupra. Although, as my dad pronounces it, Cupra, bless him. But I like this plate because it doesn't look like a private plate. This car was, of course, an, an 07 plate to begin with. At this point, I don't really know what, what else to say. What I will say is this is definitely one of the best mods I've done to the car. I love how Leo feels so transformed compared to when I first got him. I'd be honest, when I uh, took this car for my first, um, I was going to say road test, but before I bought it, obviously I gave it a quick test drive. And whilst it felt capable, I didn't fall in love with it. I wasn't bowled over by the performance. It didn't really on my pickle so to speak but I bought it because it made a lot of sense oh. <laughs> and now I have now, and now I've had the chance to to mold the car into my own creation to make it my own yeah am I ready to use the L word am I ready to say I, I love Leo Yes, yes I am. Right, and on that rather romantic, soppy and cheesy note, I think it's time for me to end. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And I've just, my head's all over the place. Um, yeah. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession. Let's have one more little burst. <laughs> See you later, guys.